harmonic motion or simple harmonic motion is something that you observe whenever you have an object moving in such a way that the position of that object over time resembles a waveform. So if you have a pendulum that's swinging, notice that if we were to track the position of this object over time, it would travel this way and then back and that would produce a waveform. And similarly, if you had a spring that was oscillating, if you had a mass attached to a spring, stretch that spring down and then released it, the spring would go up and down and up and down like that to produce a waveform like this. And so whenever you see simple harmonic motion, oftentimes what they'll be asking you about is the angular frequency of the motion that it's exhibiting. Angular frequency is basically a measurement of the oscillation or of how many radians it completes per unit of time. You won't be responsible for the units of angular frequency on the MCAT, but you will be responsible for understanding what are the components that influence the degree to which a pendulum swings or to which a spring oscillates. And so for these formulas, what we have is for a pendulum, you have the angular frequency equals the square root of g over l, where g is the gravitational constant and l is the length of the string. And for the oscillating spring, what you have is the angular frequency is equal to the square root of k over m, where k is your spring constant that you use for your Hooke's law equations, and m is the mass of the object. So what you can be responsible for is realizing that if you were to, for example, increase the length of the string by a factor of four, because we're dealing with a square root, that would really only have the impact of dividing it in half, dividing it by two, because two is the square root of four. So realize that there is a square root involved and also realize that the L is in the denominator. So if you make the string longer, you reduce the angular frequency of this waveform. Now, a good way for students to remember this is just realizing that this lowercase omega in your angular frequency looks a lot like a W. So you can remember the swinging pendulum as wiggle. W equals the square root of G over L. And you can remember the spring formula as Wacom, W equals the square root of K over M. So WGL for the pendulum, WKM for the spring. And then your job is simply to realize that what will happen if, for example, we were to increase the spring constant of this, or if we were to double the mass or quadruple the mass, just realize that you're basically looking at the square root of the numerator or denominator. And you should be able to then figure out what factors will influence the frequency with which the pendulum or the spring oscillate.